Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Java Graphics. Today we're going to animate our images. Now in the last video we actually had a little picture that we drew in Corel Draw. We moved them around the screen, we turned them around facing left, facing right. We stopped him from moving off the edges of the screen. Today we're actually going to animate the image and make him look like he's actually walking. So if you've missed any of the other videos in this series, I'm going to put a link in the description below. You'll check out what you missed. And anyway, let's get going with animating our cartoon character. If you want to learn Java programming, or just programming in general, subscribe to this channel. We put out a lot of videos that range from beginner topics to more advanced programming concepts. Also, please like this video, share it with a friend, and write a comment as well. It goes a long way to help promote a channel like this. Now, let's get back to the video. So here's our little cartoon character we drew in a prior episode. We're going to try and make kind of like a flip book of images. We're going to make four images with his legs in different positions, his arm in a different position, and we'll just kind of rotate through them. We'll cycle through them quickly so it looks like he's actually walking. So let's first by let's first start by changing the position of the leg. So let's make his front leg step forward, his back leg step back, and his arm swing back. So let's take our front leg. And the front leg, what we're going to do is we're going to change the angle. So instead of having a 20 degree rotation, it's going to have a 40 degree rotation. That looks good. The only thing is the legs seem to move back a little. So I think we need to move it up just a hair. So we'll make this 70. That looks a little better. We'll do the same thing with the back leg. Instead of have it having a negative 20 degree rotation or 340, we'll make it 320. And as you can see, we're also going to move it back a little bit. So the like the joint where the leg attaches to the body doesn't seem to shift back and forth. Same thing with the arm. We're going to take this arm. We want to rotate it backwards a little bit. So we're going to have a rotation instead of 70 degrees. We'll have a rotation of 50 degrees. And of course, we will shift the arm back by five pixels and we will save it as player number two. This is player number one originally. We'll save it as player number two. All right, we're back with player number one again. So now what we want to do is we have this image. We have the image we created where his front leg steps forward. What we want to do now is we want to have an image where the legs are actually in reverse order. The front leg is back a little bit. The back leg is front a little bit. And of course, the arm has to swing forward. So we're going to take this front leg and instead of having uh, a rotation of 20 degrees in this direction, we'll have it as negative 20 degrees, which is really 340 degrees. And let's take our X position and we'll move the X position back to 55. So the leg doesn't seem to shift around too much. And we'll take the back leg and instead of having a negative 20 or 340 degree rotation, it'll be positive 20. And we'll take the X coordinate and we'll make that 65. All right. Now the arm, of course, we need to change the arm as well. Um, instead of having a 70 degree rotation, the arm should have uh, a 110 degree rota rotation. In other words, 20 degrees forward from the perpendicular. And we need to change the X position and the X position will be 65. And there we go. Let's save this as player number three. All right, here we are at player number three. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to make the player step in this direction. In other words, the front leg is going to go back a little bit. The back leg is going to go front a little bit. The arm's going to swing forward. So let's start with the front leg. So the front leg, instead of having a rotation of negative 20, it'll be negative 40. Of course, we need to change the X value. We're going to move it back by five pixels. The back leg, we're going to change the rotation from 20 to 40. So we're going to add 20 degrees to it. And we're going to change the position. We're going to add five to it. And the arm is going to swing forward a little bit. So instead of 110 degree rotation, it'll be 130. And then we're going to change the position of the arm to 70. All right. And we're going to save this as player number four. So here we are back at player number one. Now, all we need to do is figure out the order for how we're going to display our images to make the character move. Well, we're going to start with this position, this image, player number one. Then we're going to move to player two. He's going to step forward. And then we're going to move back to player one. And then we're going to cross the legs. So it's going to go like that. So player three. And then the 
front leg is going to continue moving backwards like that. We're going to go back to player three, and then we're going to go back to player one. So the order in which we're going to be doing this is one, two, one, three, four, three, back to one. Let's head over to NetBeans and actually flip through all of these images. So here we are back at NetBeans with our character that can move around, left, right, up, down. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a bunch of the images. We don't want just image one. We want image one, two, three, and four like we just created. Of course, I've already copied those images into the appropriate directory, my build classes directory. So let's start out here in the player object, player class. What are we going to want? Well, we don't want one image icon. We want four image icons. So this is going to now be an array. The image is also going to be an array. And then what we're going to do here is over here, we're getting our image icon. We actually want to first create the array, which is going to hold four image icons. So we'll say player image icon, and that's going to be equal to a new image icon. And it's going to be a new array of four elements. We want to do the same thing with the images. Okay. So now player image icon zero is going to be equal to the player one PNG file. Okay. And then of course, player image one will be equal to that. Okay. So now we have the zeroth image in our array. In other words, the first item in our array, which is going to be player one dot PNG. Now remember the order. I'm going to type the order here. We're going to go with one followed by two followed by one. And we're going to go three, four, three, and then we're going to cycle back to the beginning. So that's our order. So the first item in our array is the player one PNG file. Now the second item in our array, in our array is going to be, let's see, let's change the index to one. Let's change the index over here to one. The second item in our array is going to be player two dot PNG. Okay. Great. And now the next item in our array is going to be the zeroth item in our array. So all we really need to do here is just say player image two is going to equal player image zero. We don't have to get it again. There's no point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say player image three. Let's change all these indices to three. So we've gone one, two, one. Now we're going to do three, four, three. So this has to be a three followed by a four, followed by a three again. Of course, we don't need to get the third one again. We could just do player image five is going to equal player image three. So there's our rotation. We're going to just rotate through these zero, one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to start with image one, then image two, then image one again, then image three, then four, and then three, and then we cycle back to the zero. So let's scroll down to draw self. Okay, now you notice here we're drawing the player image. We need to draw the actual element of the array. So what we really need is we need a variable up here that's going to keep track of which is the current image to display. So we're going to create a variable. We're going to keep track of the index. And then in the constructor, we're going to start with zero, right? Because we're going to start at the first image. And then in draw self, all we're going to do is we're going to draw the current image. So there we go. And we're drawing the current image. So let's just double check, make sure this works. Okay. We get an error. Why do we get an error? We're getting an array index out of bounds exception, and it is at player line 50. As you can see here, we're trying to set item four. And the mistake that we made is that we've allocated only four spots in our array, even though technically we need six. Now that's a common mistake. We have four images. You would think we only need four items in our array, but in fact, we need six because some of them are going to be duplicates. So we actually need to allocate six spots. There we go. And now if we run this, you can see that we do have our image. Okay. Now notice that he's not moving. That's because we don't have uh, a method that's going to actually animate this character. So when the character is going to be moving, we want to actually animate him. So whenever this character is going to move, we will call the method 
animate. Of course, we need this method here. It'll be private. Now, what this method is going to do is this method is going to cycle through all of the images that we've created. So if we scroll back up to our array, as you can see, all we really need to do is change the index from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so on. And when it gets to 5, the next time it goes, it'll go back to 0. So in our animate, all we're going to do is we're going to say image index plus plus if image index is greater than, and now we want to get the size of our array, so we'll say, or the length of our array, I should say, if it's greater than or equal to the length of our array, then image index equals zero. Wrap around to the front again. Okay, so let's check it out. And as you can see, he's moving, but he's moving very, very quickly, right? This isn't what we want. This is too fast. But he is moving, which is nice. How are we going to slow this down? Well, first, let's think about why it's happening so quickly. Remember, this move method and this draw method is being called from the driver loop. See, we're calling player.move, which means this is happening 60 times a second which means we're cycling through our images every 60th of a second. That's way too fast. Let's try and slow that down by a factor of 10. And the way we can do that is we can actually create a counter over here. We're going to create a variable that's going to keep track of a counter. And what we're going to do is we're going to count from 1 to 10. And every time we hit 10, we'll wrap back to zero, and that's when we'll flip to the next image. So we're not going to do it every 60th of a second. We'll do it every sixth of a second. That should slow things down. So let's go into our constructor, and let's set that animation counter, and that's going to be equal to zero. And then in here, in our animation method, okay, we're not going to just increase image index by one. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, animation counter plus plus and now we're going to say if the animation counter is greater than or equal to 10 then what we're going to do is we're going to do all this stuff okay so if the animation counter gets to be greater than or equal to 10 the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our index but then of course we have to change the animation counter back to zero right so then it starts over again so now this should change our image every sixth of a second. And that looks a little bit better. Okay. Now, of course, it is a little bit choppy, as you can see. That's only because we have four images. If we wanted to make it smoother, we could have eight images, 12 images, 20 images, whatever we needed to do in order to make it a little bit smoother. Now, the other thing we're going to want to do, and this is the last thing we're going to need to do here, is we don't want the character to be actually animated, you know, look like he's walking if he's not actually moving. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So here in this move method, we call animate, which changes the image, but we don't want to do that if all of these are false. We only want to do that if one of them is true. So what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap this in an if statement. We're going to say if All right. So now we're only going to animate if we're moving in at least one direction. So let's run this, see how it looks. So now he's still. Now we're going to move. See? And as if we, as soon as we stop, right? He goes back to his normal self. But the only thing is, he's kind of stuck in like mid-step when he stops. So that doesn't look really good either. So maybe what we should do is as soon as the character stops, we should always go back to picture one. So let's go there and we'll say if he's moving, we're going to animate. Otherwise, let's change the image index equal to zero and the animation counter equal to zero, which means he's stopped moving. Everything should reset. So let's have him walk. Let's have him walk. As soon as we stop, he goes back. Notice I'm just kind of tapping on the image. And as soon as he stops, he goes back to his standard image, which means he's just standing around, chilling out. 
There you go. Those are the basics of animating an image. Now you can take this to uh, as you make this as simple or as complicated as you want. Obviously in this tutorial, we kept it very simple, but this can be very, very complicated. You can have his eye blinking. You can have his mouth moving. You can have him holding a, you know, a weapon or, or something, you know, a projectile, a crossbow to shoot enemies, whatever. Just let your imagination run wild. I hope you learned something from watching this video. Please remember to subscribe and share this video with others who are learning Java programming. Thanks for watching and take care everyone.